All right, guys, I've talked about before why I'm not a huge fan of Winkler knives, but today I thought it would be an interesting video to break down this Winkler knife, this being the Blue Ridge Hunter, um, and this one, of course, with the textured walnut. It is a very nice looking knife, kind of small, honestly, if I can show this, um, kind of small in overall blade length. It's a little bit short, a little bit stubby, and uh, it's not necessarily a bad slicer. And I've, I'll answer some more questions on this guy, but more what I want to do in this video is kind of explain what I've talked about in previous videos, but with actual live knives to show you guys or really give you some reference points as to why I dislike Winkler knives. And ultimately I'm gonna be showing you guys that this one knife costs more than any of the other knives you're gonna see here on the table. Now, this isn't necessarily the most expensive survival or bushcrafting or, you know, field knife that you can get. There are more expensive ones. I even have more expensive ones, but this is a full custom, whereas this is a semi-custom. Um, so to be fair, you know, there are more expensive knives out there, but this one is, is pretty steep. So we're going to go over this knife and some of the other knives on this or on this table and explain material differences as well. So before we get into that, I will say too, I was asked, you know, um, when it comes down to something like the Winkler, is this a good slicer? Because a lot of people might look at the Winkler and be like, oh, you know, it may not be the cheapest, but I bet it's a really good performer. And to be fair, I will say, you know, this is by no means a, sh a dull knife. Like this is by no means, you know, a non-functional. Like this is totally sharp. It will absolutely cut you if you're not careful. But I will say um, this knife is not as slicey as you might be led to believe because one, I will say it does use a decently thick um, slab of 80 CRV2, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it does use a decently thick slab of 80 CRV2 and it also um, <clears throat> is a reasonably thick bevel, I will say. There, so the meat behind the edge on at least my Winkler is fairly thick. And this is of course a factory edge. And so it's not necessarily a dull knife, but it's certainly not a super slicey knife. And so it is worth um, noting that this thing does not quite cut as nicely as you might think. Not horrible, but not great. Another thing too that's worth mentioning is that a lot of people sit there and say that ADCR V2 is essentially 1095. And from all that I can understand, and I've used the handy dandy knife steel app, which if you don't have the knife steel, Android or iPhone, it is definitely worth um, picking up or downloading. It's a free app and it just has literally, I would say like thousands of steels in there. You can search any common knife steel and it has the properties of it, the carbon content, um, or just really the whole like breakdown of different alloys that are in any type of steel. And according to the knife steel charts, um, when it comes to ADCR V2, this is actually a lower carbon steel than 1095. So a lot of people say that, you know, this is basically, ADCR V2 is basically 1095. It's actually not quite 1095. It's actually more like 1085 or 1083, technically, is the next closest equivalent. So this would be more like 1083 and the best way I can think of it to explain it is that K-Bar uses a steel called 1095 Crovan. That is, um, Cro and Van stand for chromium and vanadium. So it is a low alloy, um, <clears throat> it's a low alloy tool steel basically at that point because you're adding chromium, which adds some degree of um, stainlessness, but also some degree of hardness because chromium is harder than carbon. And also vanadium adds an extra degree of um, hardness as well. So 1095 Crovan is kind of designed uh, or was designed by K-Bar to give 1095 an extra hardness and durability because 1095, unless heat treated really high, has a high tendency to run on the softer side, which can be good for you know shock resistance but if you're going for edge retention, you're going to want it to be slightly harder. And so that's what the Crovan essentially does. So ADCR V2 is basically like 1083 Crovan because it has a slight degree of chromium and a slight degree of vanadium. So there's not an actual high degree of rust resistance because there's not enough chromium in this to make it stainless, but it adds extra chromium to give it more wear resistance. So that's essentially from what I can see on the knife charts, what ADCR V2 is in comparison to its next closest kind of competitor, which would be like the 1095 Crovan. So it is similar, but it is definitely different. Um, 
So that's kind of a breakdown on this knife. Now, this knife from factory, or if you were to get it new, like it's MSRP, is about $365. And for me, that is definitely pretty steep, especially when you consider things like, once again, I think it is a fair, reasonably fair um, comparison to show something like this Mora 511 craft line, because if you look at them tip to butt, they're about the same size. When you actually look at their cutting edges, they're about the same. Obviously the 511's a little bit, a little bit shorter. Um, it does have a little bit of a longer handle, but they are pretty similar. Once again, the Mora is being made in C100, which is a direct, clone of 1095 just made in different factories so that knife is a literal $11 knife so much much cheaper but if we do want to step it up and look at more expensive knives of course we can go over the clipper the companion the cons bull and some other cheaper knives but stepping into some more realistic comp competitive territory. We have knives that are similar. Both of these are trailing points. So you guys can see they're very similar in blade shapes. This over here is the Scrapyard Knife Company WS1021. And once again, this is a trailing point um, design. They, the Scrapyard Knife Company makes similar knives in slightly different blade shapes as well. But this is a trailing point and this is made out of SR101. Now SR101 is Bussy's proprietary version of 52100 ball bearing steel, which is actually what um, Winkler used to make their knives of. So very similar um, competitive territory here. Once again, 52100 is a low alloy ball bearing steel originally developed around World War II. So not incredibly insane performance, though I probably would honestly give the edge to 52100 or SR101. Um, it would definitely be better. The only big difference here is outside of thickness and of course the uh, Scrapyard Knife Co blade being a little bit bigger, like your cutting edge is um, about the same, but just a little bit longer on the WS1021 um, and your handle of course longer is that this is over or under under half the price. It's $150, $145 for this WS1021. Whereas once again, $365 for this bad boy here. So once again, definitely stepping it up in price from an $11 knife, but still honestly, you know, like for a knife that is very similar in function, form and performance. And I would honestly give the WS1021 a, an advantage or kind of leg up because it has a fully rubberized handle that's not going to crack. It's not going to break. It's not going to drop out um, it's going to provide traction and like serious traction whether your hands are wet cold um, or anything like that whereas this is a exposed full tang with you know sculpted walnut so it's definitely going to be far colder in cold climates so definitely worth um, thinking about keeping that in mind so let's talk about some more competitors um, the next one up and we're going to be going into bigger like full-size survival knives so you can see this literally dwarfs the srk literally dwarfs the blue ridge hunter but this is an srk in cpm 3v now i got this thing for 99 dollars, so even cheaper than the ws 1021 but still even if you look at these they retail for around 150 to 160 dollars outside of you know black friday sales and stuff and so still CPM 3V on this SRK and of course once again a far larger knife and of course it is worth noting um, the WS1021 is made in the US by Bussy um, Knife Group. This is in fairness made by um, Cold Steel in Taiwan so you are dealing with an overseas manufacturer but the knives coming out of Taiwan especially QC'd by, um, by Cold Steel are going to be perfectly more than adequate for what you need. There's absolutely no issues with them at all. So CPM 3V American Steel is going to really outperform, like highly outperform, like run circles around ADCR V2. Once again, this is a low alloy um, tool steel, whereas CPM 3V is a powdered metal tool steel that it will absolutely run circles around this steel. Like if you do look at the composition of ADCR V2 is a very basic, very basic um, tool steel, like low alloy tool steel. So when we think about low alloy tool steels, we're talking like, you know, 50 to 100. We're talking about, you know, ADCR V2, um, things like D2, W2, A, A2, um, 
or those types of steels are going to have more chromium, more vanadium, more um, alloys in them to make them, once again, harder. Um, they're gonna have higher wear resistance. They're going to be harder to sharpen than ADCRV2. Um, they're also gonna have, typically speaking, lower carbon contents. So they're going to naturally resist rust more than ADCRV2 and of course 1095, but they're just going to be harder steels that have higher wear resistance. So um, 3V is certainly one of those as well, CPM 3V, but um, yeah. All right, so let's step it up a little bit more. You know, let's just say the you know, cold steel and the WS1021 are around you know, $140 to $170. Step it up into the $200 category. Once again, $365. This is a Bark River Knives Cub, and I'm here to tell you guys, you can get some amazing knives from Bark River. And realistically, we're talking about the Cub here because we're trying to focus more on survival knives, but even for bushcrafting knives, you can get a BRK Bushcrafter for about $220. Once again, both the Cub and both the Bushcrafter are made in CPM 3V. So the same steel, very well heat treated. Um, once again, the Cub is absolutely gigantic in comparison to the little Blue Ridge. And this is a also a thicker knife um, made out of CPM 3V. So it's in a superior steel to ADCRV2. And so, I mean, literally this is bigger, better in every way imaginable. So I like this is why when I look at things like Winkler knives, I'm really hesitant to buying them because I just look at them and I'm like, this does not make sense. And I really don't want to spend, you know, a huge chunk of change on a knife when I can go and buy something like a Barky Cub for, you know, 200 20 to 250 dollars right okay stepping up a little bit more we'll step it up into the 280 dollar category this is the survive knives gso 5.1 and this one is in magna cut now take it for what it's worth magna cut's still a new steel so it's not as well proven as cpm 3v but i think everyone here would agree that magna cut is leaps and bounds better in literally every single way than ADCRV2. So $280, and granted, there can be a hefty wait time on these, but even if you pay for the marked up prices, like eBay, you'll see these things still, you know, go for $320, which is steep, but still, if you look at it, $365 for this guy, and even $320 for this, I mean, Personally, for me, this is a $280 knife, and that's kind of uh, its going rate. But, you know, it, if you look at it even as a $320 knife, still bigger, thicker, better materials, and, you know, a, a really solid knife for the price point. And once again, it's just hard to argue. Like, this is just a superior knife. And honestly, too, um, I, I'm not personally a fan, and I've mentioned this in past videos of the weird kind of handle shape of the Winkler knives but this I mean like the Survive GSO is just such a comfortable knife like it is so hard to describe it is near Bark River knives level of um, comfort in its ha like handle and its grip it has such a nice palm swell this has a no palm swell to it, it has some texturing but no palm swell to it and uh, it's not horrible but it's just also not like really like inspiring all right, last one up, I swear, we'll, we, we'll quit dogging it, but this one is the ZT0006, and this is a little bit of a different kind of divergence of knife. You know, this one um, <clears throat> does tend to trend around $280 to $300, once again, similar to the Survive, but once again, we see a CPM 3V blade on this guy, and it's a a slicey little beast um, but once again comparing it to a 365 dollar um you know winkler it's just it, it just outclassed once again you know it's much bigger thicker better materials it's just a superior knife and because it's a wider piece of or stock of steel it's actually slightly more slicey because of this grind has a greater length to come to its termination so there's not much um, material thickness behind the cutting edge on the 006. So it's actually a very good slicer. So anyways, um, it's just been kind of a breakdown of not necessarily like, I'm not trying to come off as like a bash of like, ooh, Winkler knives suck. But when you look at Winkler knives, you know, oftentimes things like the Blue Ridge Hunter and the belt knives are 
around 320 to 300 you know 65 dollars and you know their demo knives and some of their other ones are even like into the 400 dollar territory and it just does not make sense to me personally why these knives with the materials that they have the build quality that they have are charging such obscene prices for what they are i would never pay brand new winkler prices for a winkler they're just absolutely not worth it and i'm trying to make this video to showcase all of the competitive options out there that exist and of course this is not an extensive or comprehensive list there are plenty of other knives i missed even knives that i own that i missed here intentionally um, that have much better value for cost so anyways guys hopefully you learned something with this video as always god bless and i'm out